You know who you rocking with, man. Ace on Eastwood. Let me talk my shit. You know who I'm with. The voice of hip hop, Mike Powers. Intro King, baby. Let's get it, man. East side all day. Tama. What the fuck was popping is your boy, Mike Powers. Papa, this your boy Mike Powers. Hit the lights for my real hip hop heads only. My next guest is the product of a seed planted in the Bronx long ago. Some of you may still be unfamiliar with this MC, so I intend to use this video as a way to lead you towards enlightenment. I do this for the same reason your moms give you Robitussin or your dad put the belt to your hind side because you need it. The man on the left side of your screen is not a good MC. He is a gifted MC, not hailing from hip hop's East Coast Mecca, but instead he descends upon us from the land that gave us Ice T, MC Ren, K Dot, Nipsey Hustle, Planet Asia, Too Short, and a slew of others who helped to fertilize the soil that continues to feed the masses. For they are the leaves that fall, born from that seed that was planted to give voice to the realities of our existence. This seed, it blossomed into this thing we call hip hop. He's taken all the requisite notes. After performing the required study, this confidence and his remarkable ability being displayed in a matter of fact fashion, my friends, I believe this trait above all others is what makes him especially dangerous. The answer to the questions, who is the most incredible MC that hip hop DX is barely literate and completely out of touch writers never mention? Who among the throngs of aspiring West Coast lyricists has the gravitas and wherewithal to extend this branch of the tree called hip hop? Who shall we look to when our ears crave mastery? The answers to one and all of these inquiries is the same, and it gives me great pleasure to provide you the answer as I welcome one of the most prolific lyricists to come out of Killer Cali in some time. Ladies and gentlemen, live as fuck from Oxnard, California, co-CEO of The Money Tree, and one major reason why average rappers will decide to quit the sport this year. Mark Ford is in the building. Yes, sir. It's cracking, hey, man. Mr. Ford, thank you for being here. It's my honor to have you on the platform. Great, um, man. I'm just happy to be acknowledged. That was a dope, that was a dope intro. Oh, really? thank you for saying that. And yeah. let me just start off by saying, let, let's get to the, the part of how I came to know who you are. Let's get so to it. it's like YouTube, I'm sitting there, they know my algorithm. It's a lot of things out there. I come across your name, interesting name, interesting spelling. I click it. I like it. I said, okay, let me click another one. Boom. Fire. What? Let me click another one. Boom. 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 Boom, boom. Everything you don't miss. So, <laughs> so everybody knows what's going on because I got a long list of people I'm gonna interview. I done talked to a lot of folks out there. They watching right now. This guy from that night on YouTube moved to the top of my interview list. And thank you, Lord Jesus, that he agreed to come and sit down and talk to us. Thank you. Um, I almost feel like I'm being pranked or some shit. You man. ain't being pranked at all, bro. You crazy <laughs> with it. And DJ Beans, who's a co-host on my other show uh, called Reloading. She, she don't, yeah. Song. Yeah. She said yeah. she wanted to make sure that she wanted me to let you know how impressed she is with your work and that she know that she need to get more tapped in with you, but she appreciate what you're doing. So that's from Beans. Oh, well, that's dope. Yeah. That's dope. Shout out so to Beans. You from Oxnard, California. Yes. yes. Right? Okay. Um, you have a decidedly, sometimes a little bit of an East Coast sound. I see, I hear a lot of scratches, um, punchlines. How did you come to appreciate that East Coast feel? That's what the fuck I was raised up on. You know what I'm saying? From like Rakim, Big Daddy Kane, all that shit. You know, I'm a little bit older, but like my brother, he's 10 years older than me. So he had this whole drawer just full of tapes of hip hop. So I've been exposed to hip hop since an early age from all different areas too, like the ghetto boys in the South, just just different different squads, different people, different sounds, different voices. I always love 
the sound of hip hop. Like I was a super big fan before I got into it. And then when I, when I got into it more or less, it was with the beat making side of things. I was all like, that'd be dope if I could just sit there and, and make like dope beats, just smoke weed, get high. And then it just progressed from there, you know? Word. And um, you, you mentioned Rakim. You know, yeah. Rakim was my number one for a very long time before Nas showed up. But as, in terms of Rakim, can you just give me one of your favorite Rakim songs? Sure, man. All of them, bro. Like, like, how you gonna say like just one? You know, like picking your babies. Like me, I used yeah. to really love Chinese arithmetic a lot. Of course, Eric B is president. Oh my God! Like you saying you a little bit older. You look to me like you're 22. Okay, you're gonna I'll tell take me it. <laughs> <laughs> but I was I was around I was outside when Eric B as president came out and I'm gonna tell you Ooh. what it did to the hood what it did to the hood oh my god just the beat on the song rule the world you took a very direct shot at Takashi break it take shit riding with my niggas in the city in that spaceship pro tools made this play the game eight bit donkey Kong flow got the people going ape shit pieces with the fields niggas missing with the paint chips y'all niggas going on live with the work and dry snitching like the plaintiffs <laughs> Um, do you think that he could be accused of being a snitch if he was really a civilian? And and is that more on him or the cast that brought him in? N nigga, that's on everybody. Fuck yeah, he a snitch, bro. Like, come on, he didn't put people away for life that he was directly involved with the gang. You could say that he wasn't a gang member, obviously, but they brought him in, right? And he was doing gang shit, right? So the nigga that, like, he put away that he snitched on really bad that like he was all put a 30 pack on this nigga that was his homie bro yeah like i don't give a fuck that's a snitch that's a rat nigga like mm -hmm. we don't fuck with those you know what i'm saying right. and beforehand I'm, i'll admit beforehand not the music but just like the antics and everything how he's calling people out it was entertainment you know right. what i'm saying so i i kind of fed into that so like people like myself are guilty of that shit because it was funny you know but like I can't like endorse a nigga like that ever. That's interesting to hear you take yourself to task, you know, and and kind of hold your own self accountable. Um, like, does that make you at all uncomfortable to be to have to say that at one point you kind of did feed into that? No, because I'm comfortable in my own skin. Like anybody that ain't comfortable in their own skin, like maybe they'll have a problem with it. But like if you you listen to all my music, right? It's 100% yes. me. So it's like, if I'm revealing myself on songs all the time, then I have nothing to be afraid of by telling the truth. You know what I'm saying? I might even throw it on a track. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, and then, you know, Akon got cool with him. Like, there was that clip with... That was a bag, bro. He got a bag out of it. I, I can't I can't really condone that either. But, you know, like, Akon, like, niggas that are legends in the music industry, I, I, I hold a high respect because at least they did it. You know what I'm saying? But I, I, I couldn't believe that shit, bro. I'm going to be real with you. What do you think about um, Phase on Love coming out and criticizing people like Dave East saying he may be not a real crip? I mean, Phase on, from what I know, like, he, he was in the hood and, like, he rose with niggas. So, like, he could speak on that. That's, that's black politics, you know what I'm saying? Like, he do what the fuck he want. But, I mean, to me, it, it looks like he kind of, like, kind of bitter over whatever because if you at that level of success like i feel that he would be at like why are you even mentioning anybody like just get your bag but i mean that comes back to the way i was just being honest with myself maybe he's just being honest and that's what he want to do you know i know a lot of niggas like that man you got a chaotic eyeball back there yes uh i'm about to get one oh that, that game changer bro especially if you got an echo ass room you know yeah, saying? I got one of them. I got these ceilings as well. And all my people yeah. on, on my show, they got them. Um, so I'm going to get me one. You said it's a game changer. It's affordable too. Um, yeah. DMT Media, also known as The Money Tree. Am I getting this right? Um, well, so DMT Media is our media company and The Money Tree is actually the record label. So yeah, it's two okay. separate entities, but of the same umbrella. Who makes up the collective? And are you at the head of it? Uh, yeah. Um, so initially when I first, when we first came up with DMT, that was me and uh, my bro Houdini. Um, he still makes beats and everything, but you know, 
he kind of fell back a little bit on everything. But like, I, that's still my brother. I, I still consider him part of it. But as far as like, uh, like active members, you got me, you got my bro, um, the crooked one. You got my homie, um, it's X music. He's really dope. Um, you got my bro Renzel. You got producers, um, Ford, the other Ford. He's in North Carolina. Oh, Yo, North, North you're Mob. connected with Ford. Yeah, that's the homie. That's my man's right there, though. You know what's crazy? Cause ask him this story about how he hit me up. But I was on Knotts' page and I heard a dope ass beat, and I hit up Knotts, and I was all like, "Hey, man, how much is this?" This nigga messages me, and he's all like, "Hey, man, if you need real, real fire beats, hit me up." So we started talking. And I said, hey, man, that's crazy. He said, what? I said, we got the same name, spell it out the same way and everything. We started chopping it up a little bit more. He shot me beats just off of the strength. And uh, we've been fucking with each other ever since. This is the thing that that probably, and I didn't mention this, that probably made me click your video that night when I was watching YouTube. Because me and me and Ford talk a lot, like yeah. on DMs and stuff like that. And, yeah. and Ford can rap. Yeah, he don't. I, this boy and I done played his shit on my show and when I found out he could rap I said yo you could rap. and he was like yeah so then I see you with the same spelling and I was confused so I clicked it man come on the way the universe worked though man I'm so glad I clicked it and then when I like I said when I go talk I was like she said who you interviewing I said I'm interviewing Mark Ford she was like a holy I was like yeah yeah because that boy like you you a threat what I said in the fucking intro, bro, about hey, man, motherfuckers on, on the West Coast, one of the dopest lyricists I done seen in some time. Like, people get slept on. I get pissed about it. it I got a playlist, like, folder when I'm about to go live on Saturday. Dope. And you got, you probably got 12 songs in there just waiting to get played. I'm a fan <laughs> first, man. I love what you do, hey, and I love, I love artists, man. So... Um, oh, man, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be real like this is kind of a shocker like I didn't even uh, check into who you were or more or less so that's my bad but like I saw you want to do an interview and I got this uh project that just released in Japan so I was like cool but man you really making me feel good bro because a lot of times I'll be telling niggas like sometimes you know like I got a lot of fans and supporters that I'm really thankful for but like I think a lot of people could attest to this. Sometimes it just feels like you just letting off shots in the air. You know what I'm saying? Like you ain't really aiming at a target and to know that you just organically found me, that's just dope. It makes me want to just work harder. No, please do work harder because you one of these dudes that it, it's the field is crowded. All right. And it's, it's a lot to when, when, when you talk about rock him and what you stuff you grew up on at that time, we had, not many right and then it was gate it was kind of gatekeepers whether it was good or bad you what you wasn't seeing a lot of whack people in front of you your choices was like you know what i mean so but now it's like if you got a mic you could you could be a rapper right mm -hmm. but you are the truth like my ears work perfectly bro and that's why we're gonna keep on playing your shit because me people need to hear it my the people that fuck with this channel they love lyrics who did the incredible artwork on uh lighting trees lighting trees that was a chris b murray dope ass artist chris yeah b. murray again wow yeah, fucking dope as fuck man like we got more work coming up soon i just i gotta um break down the concept to him a little bit more but yeah he dope and he's starting to get into that nft game so i gotta i gotta get to him before his prices get crazy man because uh he's just uh, super talented bro did Big you artist. get did you get canceled from IG? I saw that on your Twitter. Yeah, I'm I'm shadow banned, man. What happened? Uh, it's crazy because I feel like I'm getting targeted or something. Like uh, the homie Body Bad Band told me like somebody's hating on you, reporting your shit. But I literally posted like a Spider Man meme. It was like three Spider Mans, and one was all like COVID. The other one was like the flu, and then the other one was like the common cold. And as soon as I posted it, it said, "Wait, you mean you you mean this?" Yeah, nigga, <laughs> bruh, but when I tell you I done seen that shit like so many other times with so many other people, like I think I seen Currency post it, I seen um, 50 Cent post some shit like that, and, and the shit's still up, so I feel like I am being targeted to be real with you. What's your thoughts on the virus? You think it's a hoax? Nah, man, that shit real. My, my uncle died of it, but oh, man. here's the thing, bro. Like, I feel like and I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but like, so look, bro, 
when it first came out, we assumed that it was really from a wet market and everything. But there's a lab literally down the street, right by the wet market, where they specialize in doing data function research, which is trying to mix different viruses together and see what happens when they grow. So I don't know, man. Then you had Trump. That nigga was on office talking crazy, giving China terrorists and shit, right? And then all of a sudden we get this worldwide pandemic. I don't know. I'm not saying I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but what I am saying is like, I think this shit's real. How this shit's being handled though, is kind of funny to me. I think like the pharma companies are really just trying to get a bag out of this shit, to be honest with you, because I feel like the people that need the vaccine are probably older folks. You know what I'm saying? Maybe um, people that have underlying issues like heart disease or that are, are big, obese or whatever. But like everybody don't need that shit. You know what I'm saying? I know so many people that it ran through and it was like nothing. And now they got the antibodies, but they still push niggas to get the fucking, the jab, bro. Like it don't make sense to me. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. That's a lot to unpack there. And I and, and if, I, if I got into it, we could be sitting here talking forever. Generally, I agree with what you're saying. I'm a scared dude. Like they they got me. They they got me all the way in their grip. I ain't gonna lie. You know what I mean? And then a guy like me, I smoke. I got a few pounds on me. I fuck with the fillet of fish heavy. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like I, I feel like somebody sneezes on me, it could be the end of me. So I just I'm in the house. When I go out, I mask up. I'm double vaxxed. I gotta get a booster. But yeah, they could handle this a whole lot better. And I don't put nothing past these guys up here that they might be trying to play with us down here. I don't put nothing past them. You also own um, Twitter. Put, <laughs> you put the hashtag, let's go Brandon. Are you political? Um, No, I'm not. Okay. But, damn, you did your fucking research. God damn, that was like an old ass tweet and shit. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Hey, man, you like the first interviewer. I'm going to give you some real ass props, man. you the first interviewer to, to actually like do research. Like most niggas just bring me on here and, you know, I got to explain everything. Like this is dope, man. Like, Yo, because let me tell you why the whole concept of what I did with this channel when it relates to talking to artists is that I feel like there's people like 50 Cent, there's Rick Ross, there's Drake, there's all these people. They go to Hot 97, they go to these radio stations, you get rolled out the red carpet. You, The people that do these lyrics, there's this resurgence that's happening with the lyrical thing, which I'm in love with. I want to see it come back because this is what I grew up on. Those artists that affect my life in a positive way. They deserve the red carpet treatment like anybody else. Let me let me explain that shit. So you know what that's that's about, right? Yeah, like fuck Joe Biden. Fuck Joe Biden. Yeah. But you know, like uh, some some nigga made a song about it, right? Yes, I did see that. Yeah. So uh, essentially, I'm like fuck Trump and fuck Joe Biden, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's it all I meant. Okay. And like to be honest, like a lot of niggas that I know were like pressuring me a lot to vote for Joe Biden last time. And I was all like, this nigga ain't gonna do anything, bro. Like, like I don't feel like the Democratic Party or the Republican Party has minorities' best interests at all. And they never will until there's like a game changer where there's like an independent or somebody that's separate from that bullshit where corporations, corporations are feeding into it, that is gonna be a change, bro. And it's just like, it's crazy right now. No, I do, I agree with that. But don't you think when we talk about the 2020 election that, if there's one guy over here that's telling the police, oh, you don't have to put your hand on their head when you put them in the car, when which is the, the, the former guy. And he's also on the Republican side, like all of them don't want to stand up and say nothing at a podium when people like me and you get shot unarmed by cops. Right. They never say nothing. So Democrats on some fuck shit, too. But when they fake it right and when they when they faking it then they're they're appealing to your vote at least then doesn't that give us just a little bit of power to lobby this side because y'all need our vote i'm gonna tell i'm gonna tell you like this this is what my pops used to tell me he was all do you want like a a, a wolf in a sheep's clothing or you would rather know who the wolf is i like that point but that does not mean i give my vote to the wolf right because when it comes oh. down to it the people, a lot of these people in rural America that support this guy, they see a guy like you. If you walk through their neighborhood, you might end up like a Ma Arbery. I, I I agree with you 100%. But at the same time, if we're talking like the economy and just how everything was going pre-COVID, 
was it going that bad? Did, did, did he did he walk into an economy that was left for him by Barack Obama, who inherited, who came into a recession? If we remember when he came in, this economy was on the Fuck brink, up. and yeah, and and the right, auto right. industry got yeah. saved behind Barack Obama, right? And that economy got turned around, and it was chugging along, and he handed it off to Trump. So nobody can name for me a Trump policy. Nobody can name for me one Trump policy that that changed what was going on in the economy. It was just happening. But he was able to go out there and take I mean, credit he brought, for it. He, he brought a lot of jobs. But I mean, there's a bunch of shit. But this goes to say that I'm not political. Right. I just look at what I see. Yeah. And like, yeah, that nigga's a clown, bro. Come on. But at the same time. And a fraud. Well, it, yes. But and, and, and a say, sexual and, and an admitted sexual assaulter. You could say the same about uh, Joe Biden. You could say the same about like Kamala Harris because she, how many niggas did she put up? Right. You know what I'm saying? As yeah. far as like with her crime bill and everything, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then she want to get in there and act like she for us. She ain't for us. Right. That's the right. way I feel personally, though. No. But let let's let's even jump off of this convo. Oh, you no. Like, you a smart guy. I like I like having a conversation. Some of this won't even make it. it, it it's gonna be on a cutting room floor. Yeah, but yeah. it's it's great to have a conversation where at least somebody is gonna push back on me, right? And you can exchange. Nothing nothing changes. Nothing yeah. evolves without people having this kind of back and forth dialogue. So I, I appreciate you. I agree. You have a line in the song Exotics where you say and Making that was really not expected Like get Benny, get a shot at Down in Texas better, nigga. Then you have the ad lib that says Get better nigga Did you feel the need to drop that ad lib So people didn't get the wrong idea about the line? Hell yeah <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like just, just in case You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. randomly I could be famous over that one line. That would be the song where I blow up on is he'd be like this nigga dissing Benny or something. You know what I'm right. saying? Or he, he might think that I had something to do with it. You know what I'm saying? But right. yeah, no, I, I and you, it, it was just a, it was just a line. That's all it was. That's you weren't trying to was, do nothing. Man. Yeah. Yeah. And and Benny as an artist, like what do you think about how, how far he's come and what his his skill level is? He's dope, man, because I remember like he was um kind of 38 specials under buddy a little bit you know what i'm saying and then um griselda got put on like when they got that shady deal and then he kind of just did his own thing it was so beautiful because he was independent the whole time you know what i'm saying and um where he's at now like with, with snoop and def jam she's just, just dope bro i noticed a consistency across all your videos a, a, a look um a feel a vibe are you in charge of curating that look or is that done in collaboration with the directors? I'm the director. You you direct all the videos? Yeah, I do all my shit. I, I've watched a million of your videos. How come I didn't know that? Yeah, cuz I don't cuz I don't cuz I don't, I, I low key don't tell anybody, man. But, okay. you know, like I I feel like when niggas know that I'm the videographer and then they know that like I rap too, I feel like niggas not necessarily hate but like situation get weird a lot of times i thought that would be better but like i like to keep the shit separate y'all speaking beyond reach the rods we can pull it spawned in this one shot stop your heart beating ptsd still me from my mind's leaving every time i drop y'all fall out this is bomb season gong ringing king kong eating suicidal thoughts over came got the song weeping smoking on gelato every day got my lungs squeaking the young heathen out the 805 got the subs peaking it's me on for so like dmt media that's my business you know what i'm saying and then mark ford that's me as a, as a rapper and everything. But, you know, people know. But, you know, I don't just put it out there like that. What's interesting about that is that, um, let's look at Griselda for a minute. They have some incredible videos before they get the whole shady thing popping. Like the look on those, like Grimey. crazy. Yeah. And you remind me of their look. I mean, they still got a decent look. Like the first Hype Williams look that they got, I was like, okay, y'all had to do that look. But... I'm used to a certain thing. I'm just used to y'all feel on it. You know what I mean? So the Hype Williams thing. But when I look at it reminds me that when I look at your videos, like you have an incredible eye. Um, and for what you do lyrically, it, it it was engaging for me to watch the visuals. So thank you for doing that. We got us a great videographer and director on our hands as well, people. Um, thank you. Thank you for noticing, man. Like, um, I just love that cinematic look. You know, I don't know necessarily know if I hit it all the time. But that that's the goal eventually is to try and do like um, a bunch of short films. You know what I'm saying? I would love to be able to do that, to do a documentary 
or to be funded to do a documentary the right way to yeah. make it just really grimy dark that's the type of shit that i like what's your connection to nipsey hustle shit man um nipsey was just like a person that i looked up to you gotta realize that i started extra late and not giving away my age or anything but like i started making beats like 2011 like really making beats and then uh from there my boy crooked one he put me on a nipsey and um just seeing everything that he did like that was the perfect time too because that's when all the marathon tapes dropped then i was all like okay then he dropped crenshaw and then you saw the evolution of everything changing. He charged $100 for that tape off a of mixtape, changed the game. And then Mailbox Money, Slawson Boy 2, um, all the way up to Victory Lap. And just seeing everything, the evolution, his business mind state, how he conducted himself during interviews. Like, even though he was heavily involved in street shit, he would never really brag about it or talk about it. And I was all like, this nigga moved different, bro. And it was something that I think a lot of people could relate to. How yeah. large is his impact still looming over California? Is it still, can you still feel it? Can you still, still feel Nipsey in the air? Yeah, man, it's, it's, it's fucked up, bro. And it's like um, his store ain't open, you know, like they still mail everything out. They have the warehouse, but the store is still closed off and everything. So like that whole area, you see kind of like, I'm not going to say going downhill, but it's just different. It's a different feeling out there. When it was open before, you would catch Nip at a shot. Like I met Nip like a bunch of times, like four times, I think. I met him once in Vegas, Vegas at his store. Um, I met him over there um in Hollywood one time, and he remembered me all the time. Word. That's crazy. He had no like reason to, to memorize who I was. Like I was a nobody, you know what I'm saying? But he's all oh, I remember you even taking pictures in Vegas, and like he was a cool, dude. You know what I'm saying? So to be honest, when that shit. When I found out about that shit, I remember like it was yesterday because I was out and about and my girl hit me and she was like, oh, my God, the rapper that you like got shot. And I was all like, who? And she was like, Nipsey. And I was all like, damn, that's crazy. And I was just thinking, oh, niggas get shot all the time. He'll be all right. And like out of all things, I bet it was some bullshit. Like it wasn't like a serious hit because who would want to take Nipsey like that? Then I started thinking I was out with my boys and shit. I was all like, that'd be crazy, man, because I, I bang Nipsey all the time. And then she hit me back again. She was all like, oh, my God, he got hit five times. And I was like, damn. And then uh, shortly after that, I, I just couldn't get that shit out of my head. So I looked him up, you know, just to look up the story. First thing I saw, like whoever was on it was on it fast. They were like, Nipsey Hussle was an American rapper. And I was all like, oh, uh... I'm getting chills right now, man, like. That yeah. shit fucked me up. And I never felt like that. That's my Tupac moment. That's my Biggie moment. Because I remember I was alive when that shit happened, but it didn't hit me like that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's tragic. And when you talk about you, th you thought that he just took a bullet, he was going to pop off pop out of it we we sort of thought the same thing when we heard that Pac went to the hospital the last time like oh but you know Pac gets shot you know every once in a while he gonna make it and then you get the news that he's no longer here and it's it's that quick you know what i mean um and i have yet to hear anybody speak ill of this man before or since his passing like what you say about him is what people have to say about him can you remember any Thing that he might have told you when you spoke to him that stuck with you the one time that i remember is i, I used to um i would live in vegas for a little bit and i was a, a photographer at caesar's palace and um i was shooting um a little event up in um the nobu and i remember um i technically wasn't supposed to go past the little corridor or whatever but i saw nipsey i was all like oh shit what up nigga like yo 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 and he was all like come on bro and uh, I was all, let me let me get a picture with you. And he was like, cool, cool. I took a flick with him or whatever. And um, he was just cool, man. Like, I don't I don't know what it was, man. He's just like, the nigga had an aura about him. Like, you know how, like, sometimes you'll meet somebody and it just feels like they glowing and shit? Yeah. Like, his yeah. energy was just good. Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't a hater bone in his body. I didn't see anything. <laughs> man. Um, life Goes On is a, is a song of yours. Um, 
it's some real grimy Tim Boots type music. Is that the type of music you personally bump in the whip? Life goes on. Oh, you, you Ford produced that. Did he? Yeah. <laughs> he sent me like a bunch of beats. And I was all like, nigga, that one. And mm-hmm. the whole pandemic was going on at the time. So mm-hmm. I don't know. That was that was one of my favorite joints just because I love the beat. The beat was perfect. He got off on that. I feel like I got off on my verses. Um, and it captured like a moment in time, like, you know, like a lot of shit with the pandemic, I feel like it's played out now. Mm-hmm. But like when I dropped that, like so many people had told me like, this is a dope video. This this is this is a perfect song for like right now. You know? If you could be any character for Mortal Kombat, who would it be? <laughs> this nigga buzzing out the Mortal Kombat question. <laughs> Damn, that's going to sound evil. Probably like Noob Saibot. <laughs> yeah, sound, it sound evil as fuck, but like that's the first Sub-Zero. And he cold as fuck, and then he got killed, went to hell, came back out of hell. So I don't know, like probably him. You know what I'm saying? All right, that's dope. Uh, I got like one more question here. I'll be, I'm trying to keep my interview. You, you've never seen my stuff before. You should tap in. But um, no, I am, I am, and I, I appreciate, got, it. man. Like I said, I'm really appreciative of you, uh, even uh, men, thinking about me. You, you brought up Young Thug's name. Would, could you see yourself going to a Young Thug concert? No. <laughs> Mark Ford, thank you for being here. I appreciate it. We're going to keep on playing your music. And before you get out of here, can you just start plugging whatever you got that's out there right now so my people can be aware? Yeah, I got a project that's exclusively dropping in Japan right now with the homie Vanderood. It's a seven-inch single off a new project that I'm going to be dropping, and it's going to be a vinyl. The, the test pressings for that single are already sold out, so shout out to everybody that did it. But we got a new project that's unannounced right now, but it's going to be dropping shortly exclusively in Japan for all my vinyl heads. Um, on my website, you could uh, still grab the Coos from Pluto, which is uh, one of the albums. It's got Daniel Sun, the homie X music on there. Um, you know what I'm saying? Um, I got a lot of work coming this year, man, with the homie DJ Manipulator. That's somebody else that's in the money tree that I didn't get to mention. Um, I got a project that I'm working on with Ford, which is going to be dope. And then we got uh, the money tree compilation, which is coming soon. So. A lot of work to be expecting. I really appreciate you for reaching out and uh, being a fan, man. No, I'm, and I'm going to stay a fan, and I appreciate you for being here and for, for putting out the music that you put out. Like, that that's this good music and the lyrical shit is like water to me. Quite honestly, it is. And so when I came across you, it was like, it's a blessing. I don't know if you know who Left Lane did on is. But yeah, he's he dope as fuck. Like, when I found him, I just bugged the fuck out when I first found him. So I'm I'm that type of dude. I don't the name shit don't mean nothing to me. The views, the clicks, all it may it, it matters what you do on that mic and you do it really well. What the fuck was poppin' is your boy Mike with I was like, uh, 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 uh,